Hey guys, I'm Wade. Um, I haven't been on YouTube in a while. Um, there's a few reasons for that, but it doesn't really matter. But I really felt like making some videos again. Um, and really they're just gonna be casual. No scripts prepared, just completely winging it. Um, seeing how it goes. But today I wanted to make a video, maybe a few videos, um, about the creative process for designing a board game. Um, because that's something I've been doing for three years almost, not quite. Um, and I just thought it would, you know, help me out and be a good thing to talk about while I'm working on it. I can, you know, go through the history of the changes and how I've, like, changed my thinking process and, you know, figuring out how to make a board game. I um, thought it might be interesting for maybe two people out there, but yeah, so this is what that video is going to be. I'll just start talking about that. I thought the best place to begin would probably be how I came up with the idea or like when I came up with the idea, what the circumstances were, what the idea was, because it's changed a lot over the past three years, as you could imagine. So um, I have always been into board games. I've thought they were cool. I played them as a kid, um, but it wasn't like good board games. It was those board games everybody knows, like um, Monopoly, Risk, Sorry, Payday, those kind of things, those like old games that everybody's got in their house, like Connect Four. Like you've got you've got at least a few of those games. So um, yeah, I'd always play like Risk with my brothers or like, Monopoly with my friends. Um, and that's like what I thought of. That's what most people think of. Like what a board game is. When you think of board games, the average person probably imagines Monopoly. That's a really well-known one. And that's a shame because it's not until like three years ago, around the time I started making this board game, that I really opened up, like the world of board games was opened up to me. Like I found out what good board games actually are. And most of them are modern because, you know, there's shifts in the board game industry, I guess, and how board games are designed and what they're like. So I was used to all these old ones that are filled with like player elimination and just the like really long stretching out just and really like they're the types of games that make you hate people. There's the types of games that if you play them with your like cousins that you only see at every Thanksgiving, you're going to like end up not wanting to talk to them ever again because they like just beat you really badly in risk, which is like a family tradition that I had was we would play to risk every Thanksgiving for multiple years and it died down. Um, so yeah, I feel like there's more to board games than most people realize, and I was one of those people. So, actually, um, it was October of 2016 is when I thought of this idea for this board game that I've been making. I was staying in France. Uh, I went to France for two months. I stayed with this family. Um, it was like a homestay. It was really cool, and they were really into board games. Um, I mean, they didn't have a ton, but they showed me ones that I've never seen before. So, like, Puerto Rico, that is a very well-known board game, if you're into the hobby, um, came out in, like, the last, you know, 15 years, so it's a 2000-plus era game, and uh, I, had, I hadn't heard of it, I never played, played it before, but I played it a bunch of times with my French family, homestay family that I stayed with, um, and it, it, like, made me realize, like, wow, board game, there's so much more to board games, and I already like them, and now, like, I'm getting into the like territory of newer board games. Um, so playing that a bunch was really cool. And the nice thing about it was it might've been, it wasn't actually as long as Risk and Monopoly. Those games can take like four hours or like six. If you got a lot of people that are really trying hard, um, Puerto Rico takes like, could take like one, but probably around two hours each time. And the nice thing is there's no player elimination. Like everybody's playing, having a good time until the end, even if you lose miserably. Um, because really, I don't, like, who wants to play a four-hour game and then get knocked out two hours in, and then what do you do? You just you just sit there and watch the other three people you're playing Risk with just for another two hours, or do you leave? Do you turn on the TV? Like, either way, you're not really participating anymore. And, I mean, in most cases, you're probably not, unless you're really, like, cheering them on and getting into the spectating of it. But that's probably not you or me. It's not me. So you want to be playing the game the whole time, you know? So Puerto Rico, even though it is competitive, there's like, you know, resources that you got to try to control and, you, you know, you're still trying to ruin other people's, you know, plans and stuff like that. So it still can get stressful if, you know, you're playing with a poor loser or you are a poor loser yourself. 
Um, but yeah, it's the, you're staying, you're playing the game for the whole time and it's still competitive. Another game we played and this one, especially like this was the one that really got the, the wheels turning for this, this idea and like made me think of some new ideas. Um, it was, well, in English, it would be called the Valley of Mammoths. So basically what it was is like a survival game. Um, it's competitive still. And you control these cavemen and there's this map and like there's uh, like these areas that have food that you can gather. There's these like areas that like wolves and mammoths spawn in from and you can kill them for food. Um, and the turn goes in like, or the game goes in terms of uh, like seasons. So like each season you've got to feed your people and you can reproduce more people. So you're trying to like keep your caveman population alive and you know expand them if you can, but with each season it gets colder and colder, it's getting into the ice age, so it gets harder and harder harder to survive. So it's like a really punishing game. It's hard to just win for anyone really. Like you're playing with four people and it's often it's like frequent that everybody loses because everybody's dead. But if you do manage to, like, if the two people manage to survive until the end of the game, then I guess you might decide who wins based off of, I don't even, we didn't, that never happened to us, but probably who wins based off of how many cavemen are alive in your little group. So anyway, that game kind of got me thinking, like, it was really thematic, um, and, you know, it got me thinking what board games could be, because a lot of board games are really, like, mechanics heavy really crunchy um and that game still had mechanics but it was also really theme heavy too because puerto rico honestly isn't it's might as well not be about puerto rico it could be about anything you know you just it could be about space which there's race for the galaxy which is like the same thing so it kind of is um whatever it's not about the theme it's about the mechanics and then i mean yeah i've, I've learned since then that that actually is a thing there's the euro games the european games which tend to be heavy mechanics, light theme, and then there's the, uh, what's known as Ameritrash games, which are, like, heavy theme, light mechanics, and people make fun of them. Um, so I was imagining, like, a perfect, like, blend of the two, like, a really thematic game, but also really, you know, systematically engaging. Um, and so my idea, like, it just kind of sparked, like, out of nowhere, which, I mean... That's where the best ideas come from. And the better the idea, the more directly it comes from nowhere. Um, which is, I didn't make that up. That's a quote that I like. So it just, you know, I, I can't trace the thought back to the original point, but it was because of we were playing these all these board games. I was immersed in playing board games. I was thinking about them, playing them frequently. And yeah, that's what I've found is when you're, you know, you immerse yourself in a type of thing, your thoughts are about that thing. So you're getting all these new ideas. Like, if you are writing some short stories, you'll get a ton of short story ideas. And you'll just keep keep getting them as long as you're focused in that, you know, subject. If you're playing a lot of board games or making board games, you'll just keep getting board game ideas. Like, in the past three years since I've thought of this first one, I've thought of, like, 40 more board game ideas. I'm not going to work on them because I don't have the time. I can't, and if I split myself, it'll take even longer. Got to focus on one. But yeah, so I was in that world, so it just came kind of out of nowhere, but whatever. So it was like one night, we were playing the Valley of Mammoths, and I didn't win because I never won. And I thought of this idea, like, it was just like a shadow of an idea of, like, what a board game could be. And my favorite genre of video game is the fantasy RPG, like things like Skyrim, um, or like Zelda games, like that kind of thing. You know, you level up your characters, progression, spells, abilities, open world, The Witcher that kind of game. I've always been really engaged by that. So my idea for the board game was basically turning a fantasy RPG video game into a board game. So it would be multiplayer because, I mean, it's a board game kind of needs to be. Solo play, solo board games aren't very fun. Um, and you could choose like one of a few character classes you start off and you know you've got some spells and you level up you get more spells more abilities you could do like warrior ranger paladin you know the the normal ones the typical ones you might find you know, like necromancer mage druid priest bard rogue and i think that's it 
So each class would have its own abilities that would separate it, differentiate it from the other classes. So they'd have their own play style. You know, priests would be really good at like healing and, you know, warriors would be really good at just killing stuff. So the game, this RPG, you level up, the max level would be 20. And my idea was it would probably, I was aiming for like, it would take maybe like two, three hours to reach level 20. If, you know, you're playing in not a really slow fashion. So, and it was also, it was going to be like a dudes on a map board game. So, you know, it was going to be a customizable map, kind of like Settlers of Catan or lots of games that do that. You build your own map before you start, and then you start in the middle of the map in, in like the city. And when the game starts, there's like these quest cards, like 10 of them, 10 different ones. You flip it over, and that is the goal of the game for everybody, that game. So it might be like reach level 20, reach max level. Or on the map, on the edge, there's um, these like boss tiles. If you go to them, you fight a like really difficult boss. It's got like multiple phases, changes things up. Um, one of the quest cards is just kill a boss. Also on the edge of the map are these princess towers, and there's one per player. And if you bring your little character to the uh, tower, then you get a token, princess token that follows you around. And she doesn't attack. She just has a set amount of health. And if she dies, she's dead. And then you gotta go find another princess. So one of the quests was bring a princess back to the city. Another one is like bring a ton of gold back. So there's these different paths that you can, different ways the game can be won, which I thought was kind of cool. And then, you know, if you don't want to leave it up to randomness, you can just say with your friends, hey, let's just do the reach level 20 one. You know, let's just make sure it's that one because that's what we find the most fun or whatever. So also on this map, there's different like biomes. There's forest, water, tundra, um, desert. And depending on the biome, you fight different enemies. So if your character is in the forest, you flip over a card for forest enemies, you might fight like a bear, giant spider, something like that. And the water might fight a shark or whatever, mermaid. Um, so yeah, and then also depending on the biomes, there's these crafting materials. And that was a big part of what I imagined initially is being able to not, not just like level up and progress your characters that way, but also craft items and gather items. So you could get and um, gathering supplies from enemies. You might get like leather, like blood, stuff like that. Or you could go to the forest and gather mushrooms and wood and stuff like that. And then say, even though you've killed 20 guys so far, just because it's a deck of cards, there's some randomness involved, you haven't gotten any foot gear yet. So you can craft your own foot gear. And there'd be a certain amount of, you know, character on your, on your little character board, different amount of slots that you can put your gear into. There's the head slot, chest, arms, legs, there's a trinket, and a weapon. Um, so say you find multiple head slots, and the one you're wearing is better than the other two that you've got in your hand, you can either sell those in, in the town, or you can destroy them for magic dust. And this was another big part of the game idea, is um, being able to take this magic dust that you got from destroying unnecessary gear and use it to make your existing equipped gear even better. So enchanting your gear was a, a big part of what I liked. Being able to progress your character in multiple ways. And um, that was basically all the aspects of the game I thought of initially. Um, all the customizability, the you know exploration kind of, um, and also the ability for players to fight each other. I, it, I didn't really ever quite balance that out. That's not in the game anymore, spoiler alert, but um, yeah, PvP combat was an idea I had for the board game. Um, so yeah, that was the basic concept of the board game. And I've gone on long enough already, so I think I'll end this video here. I covered, you know, the circumstances of, you know, thinking of the idea, what the idea was, and in my next video, I'll just go over the actual beginning steps of how I went about making the board game, and like what the thought processes were and what I like did physically and the ideas that I came up with. But yeah, so I'm just gonna make some videos about this, see where it goes, probably do some videos about other stuff too, but I thought, you know, might as well just make like some low key videos once a week or so, nothing special about them, just sitting here talking to the camera and you know, see if anybody likes it and if not, no big deal. But yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, until next time, I guess. Thanks.